the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo meat dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston seldom had to go north of the Arctic Circle for that area was definitely part of the Yukon Territory. Sparsely settled with Eskimos who were harmless and peaceful, there was very little crime and disorder. The few trips he was obliged to make were in pursuit of criminals who had headed for the Northland with the hope that they wouldn't be followed. Such a criminal was Pierce James, a hardened and scrupulous killer. With him, and in complete contrast to him, was Pete Andrews, a boy of 19 who toiled up the icy slope of a mountain ridge after Pierce, weary and protesting. Pierce, I can't go any farther. Please stop. I'll stop you, that jellyfish. we got to get to that ledge before that blessed money comes around the bend. Let's give up, Pierce. I'm ready to quit. He's bound to get us. He won't get me. I'm getting him first. We're out of ammunition. We'll starve. We can't hunt. i got one bullet left. That's Sergeant Preston's name on it. I get him. Maybe we can find some Eskimos who feed us. It's him or us now. Backtracking up this ridge. We're going toward him. He's coming around the base of it. I want to get above him where I can shoot down. Can't afford to miss. Here. Get down behind this rock. Pierce. It isn't right. Shooting a man down like this, it's murder. I was out of my mind to bring a sniveling puppy like you with me. I thought you had nerve. I'd never come if I'd known what you really were. I wish now I'd shut never... up. There he is. Now if I can hit him. No, Pierce. Oh, there you blasted little fool. Why did you grab on my gun? But murder. Yeah, it didn't matter. I got him. See, he's on his face. Now come on, we're getting out of here. But maybe he isn't dead. You can't go off and leave him. I suppose I'm going to go down there and let that lead dog chew me up. That's one reason I got up here to do it. But Pierce, you can't let a wounded man just lie there. You. You're just a murderer. Shut up, you crybaby. I'm through with you, too. And I don't need a bullet to make sure. Yeah. You'll freeze to death before you get conscious, you sniveling fool. As Sergeant Preston regained consciousness, he felt the soft, warm tongue of his lead dog, King, licking his face and heard his anxious whine. There was a dull ache in his head from striking the sled when he fell. And when he moved, a sharp stinging pain in his shoulder made him... Oh! King! King boy! Oh, my shoulder. What's wrong, boy? I'm coming to help you! Will you hold that dog back? Back, King. Steady, boy. Hold it. All right, come on. Down, King. All right, boy. This dog's been trailing both of you. Be careful. No funny business. Down, I say, King. Are you badly wounded? Oh, not bad enough to be in danger with King here to watch you. What's the idea of this? I, I didn't want him to shoot you. He, he knocked me out and left me. I have no gun or food, and well, I don't know this country. I, I want to help you. For my own sake as well as yours. Well, at least you're honest about it. I should never have gone with Pierce in the first place. He, he's a murderer. Why, you're just a kid. What's your name? Pete Andrews. It's all right, King. You won't hurt me, boy. Come on, Pete. I guess you better help me get on the sled. Down, King. It's all right, I say. Uh, I'm afraid he's not convinced. And it's because we've been trailing you, and he knows I'm hurt. Go to the front of the team, King. Get the dogs up. There's an Eskimo family about two miles back. Guess we better get back to them before this blizzard hits. <laughs> It was warm and comfortable in the igloo of Iraq, the Eskimo. Though only a small lamp of seal oil burned in the center of it, 
The little house of ice was snug and windproof. Preston lay on a couch of snow covered with caribou skins. Pete bent over him as he finished dressing the Mountie's wounds, while King watched it aside. There. I guess that does it. It's not a very good job, I'm afraid. That's all right, Pete. I bet he didn't shoot me a couple inches lower. I just missed my lung. I don't suppose you'll believe me, but I did try to grab the gun when he fired. Pierce is a deadly shot. Well, thanks, Pete. You probably think I'm just making that no. up. No. Pierce has a reputation for being accurate with a gun. I wondered how he happened to miss. When you fell, I was sure he hadn't. I must have hit my head on the sled when I fell. But he was accurate enough. I won't use this shoulder for a while. Are you comfortable now? <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thanks. It's all right, old fella. I'm going to live. <laughs> Stop it, King. This place is too small for all that noise. It's the first time I've ever seen an igloo. It's nice of the Eskimos to take us in. They're friendly people. They share everything. Ah, it sounds like Iraq crawling in through the tunnel entrance. He's probably bringing us a raw fish dinner. We, we bring food. Big storm come up. Where'd you get here? A storm breaking, Iraq? Good. That may mean Pierce will be stopped for a couple of days. Maybe I'll be well enough. <laughs> well, who's this, Iraq? Uh, her Ibnik, my wife. She speak only a little English. <laughs> Ibnik, you fix boots, scrape fur robes. I go feed dogs now. Come back soon. Sergeant, don't you think it's going to be rather crowded in here? Maybe I'd better sleep outside. No, Pete, not with a blizzard coming up. We'll make the best of it. Anyway, we can't insult Iraq. Well, look, Preston, that Eskimo woman's eating your boot. <laughs> oh, she's not eating it. She's softening it by chewing it with her teeth. That's one of the duties of an Eskimo wife. <laughs> she are such happy people at... Like children. Laugh all the time. They share all their possessions and have no economic problems. Yes, I guess they're always happy. Must be wonderful. Well, you sound almost envious, Pete. Yeah, I guess I am. I can't even remember a childhood without a lot of trouble. That's why I ran away from home. Oh. How'd you ever happen to get mixed up with a man like Pierce? Well, I landed in the Yukon without a dime. He taught me to win money gambling. Wasn't exactly honest the way we did it, but... Well, I was pretty desperate. And one night, well, you know about it. Burnett caught Pierce cheating, and during the fight, I hit him with a chair. I didn't mean to kill him. Why, Pete, you didn't kill Burnett. He was shot through the heart. Pierce killed him. Pierce? Well, I saw Pierce shoot, but, but he said I killed him when I hit him. Pierce knew you were a witness to the shooting. That's why I didn't want you to stay behind. Then, then you mean I won't hang the way you said I would? I don't think you're really bad, son. I can see that. Well, if you'll only let me help you, I'll make up for everything. You've done that already. As soon as this blizzard clears, perhaps I'll be well enough and we can both go after Pierce James. Now, uh, give us a piece of that fish to King. You'll have to begin by making friends with him. <laughs> there you are, boy. It's all right, King. You can eat it. Pete's on our side now. It was two days before the blizzard was over. Iraq and Ibnak shared their food cheerfully, and Pete's loyalty and admiration for Preston grew each passing hour in the small igloo. But Preston's wound was serious. Every move meant pain. It looks pretty red and swollen. Uh, well, I just have to be quiet and give it more time, I guess. Storm over now. Me go hunt. Look in bear trap. Maybe fish. Why don't you take Pete with you, Iraq? He's never seen an Eskimo bear trap. Oh, you, you mean you trust me to go? Oh, of course I trust you, Pete. You need some exercise. Oh, and take King and the dog team. The run will do them good. You can handle a dog team, can't you, Iraq? Me drive dogs good. Maybe they haul bear carcass back. But, Sergeant, you're, you're still sick. I don't like to leave you. Ednick will take care of me, won't you? <laughs> Give food. Me do. If anything goes wrong, she can get help. Her father will come. Well, if you think you'll be all right... I'll go with you, Iraq. We not gone long. Be back soon. Come on, King. It's all right, boy. Go with Pete. You need the exercise. You sure you'll be all right? I want some sleep. I'll be glad to be alone. I'm tired. I'll even send Ibnek packing for a while. Well, we'll be back soon. Come on, King. You eat? No, Ibnek. You tried to feed me five times today. I can't eat anymore. You drink? No, thanks. I uh, just want to sleep. Fix boots. You fixed them. They're soft and dry. Thanks. Why don't you go and visit your sister for a while? Me fix strap. I've told you, Ibnek, don't touch that gun or holster. That gun can kill you. Me no afraid. Strap got wet. It hard. Well, go 
see your sister. Iraq and Pete with the dog team had made a wide circle from his bear trap to his favorite fishing hole. As they neared the spot which they had marked carefully in the ice, King suddenly stopped the team. What's wrong, King? Look at him, Iraq. What's he doing? Him find trail or something. Why, well, he's running off by himself. King, come back here. Him gone. Look, tracks in snow. Tracks? Oh, you're right, Iraq. Is that the direction we take when we go back to your igloo? Yes. Maybe some Eskimo from family come fish. Iraq, let's go back. King acted so funny. Him gone, we know, cat. Come fish. No, Iraq, let's not fish. We're going back to Sergeant Preston. Iraq's igloo was built at the edge of a group of Eskimo huts. There was no one around when a weary figure dragged itself toward the narrow tunnel that led into it. Twice the man fell, and finally crawled on all fours into the entrance. As the figure appeared in the interior of the igloo, Preston stirred. Oh, you back so soon, Ebnack? I, I have to have food. Pierce, where'd you come from? You. How did you get here? I, I thought I shot you. My gun. Don't come any closer, Pierce. I don't see no gun. I'm starving. I ain't had food for two days. But I ain't too weak to get you first. Here, stand back or I'll shoot. Why don't you show me your gun? You're helpless. You ain't got a gun and, and you're wounded. I'm warning you. Stay back. You can't move your right arm. If you had a gun, you'd show it. Well, I got this knife. I can finish the job. I got enough strength left. All right, Pierce. Come on. You're... You're helpless, Preston. I'll drive this knife so deep. Oh, get him, boy. Get him, boy. Get, get, take him off. Now get away, the devil. Preston, pull him off me. All right, King, you've got him. I'll watch him, fella. Don't let him up. Back, you devil. I'll, I'll kick your teeth in. Get away. Lay there quietly if I were you, Pierce. King doesn't seem to like you very well. Call him off. Where, where did he come from? He must have crossed your trail somewhere. Remember, he was told to get you. Good boy, King. Watch him. But lucky for me that you recognize his scent. <laughs> me big strap. Who? Him. Ibnak, why did you take my gun and belt? I told you not to it touch it. It hard. Me chew him soft. Me scrape. Oh, good now. Ibnak, give me that gun. It was three weeks later that Sergeant Preston, Pete, and King reported to Inspector McGee at headquarters in Dawson. I don't see how you did it, Sergeant. Guarding a man like Pierce and an igloo all that time until you were well enough to travel. I had King and Pete to help me, Inspector. I couldn't have done it without him. Oh, yes, he could have done it, Inspector. Even wounded and sick, he directed everything. It was wonderful. Well, you seem to admire the Sergeant a lot, Pete. Oh, well, he showed me what a real man is made of, sir. And Pete? I think you showed me the makings of a real man. Pete, how would you like to be a Mountie someday? Oh, gosh. Would you? Do you mean I could really well, be... Well, if the sergeant will recommend you. Uh, what do you think, King? <laughs> yes, boy. It looks as if we found a new recruit. <laughs> These copyright dramas originating in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.